Yes, thank you so much for coming this far with me. So let's talk about customer satisfaction. Customer satisfaction. Okay, good. Now we are going to put up the video so that we can concentrate. Now, whatever you do, like you saw Professor Kotler say that the best, Philip Kotler said the best marketing is customer satisfaction. The best marketing is customer satisfaction. So first of all, you're gonna ask, who is your customer? Your customer are those who your products, services, and platforms can help, and those who can help your products, services, and customers. Get it? Your customers are those who your products, your services, and your platforms can help, and those who can help your product, your services, your platform, and you, they, they are what? They are your customers. That's why we have internal customers, or have external customers. External customers are your staff members, your investors, your, you know, all those people. But you see, making sure that both internal and external customers are satisfied is a very important job of your business. You are important in your business, but customers are more essential. Yes, we're not one of those people who will tell you that the customer is always right, no. Because of the mental health issues in the 21st century, we care for our, our workers' mental health. So we don't want a customer to come in and bully them. Yes, there are people who are called customers from health. They will come, they are dictators, they are, you know, you can't do anything to satisfy them. Yes, personally, I don't like those customers because what the time you was used to serve 100 people, you use it in serving one person. That doesn't mean they're going to send them away or whatever. But immediately, the customer's stubbornness and problem will lead to my staff members being injured or it start becoming threats to my workers or my business you know, we send them away because we can do business with everybody. So we always look out for customers from help. But that is not what we tell our staff members because customer must be respected, but we don't want the customer that will destroy their mental health. So your customers are essential because your customers are the people who can suck everybody as we stated earlier in the organization by just doing what? By just, you know, spending their money elsewhere and they can do it comfortably without even knowing that they've enjoyed you. So that is why you must understand that they are so essential that you have to create a very big umbrella that makes them satisfied. Satisfied, satisfied customers will come back to buy more and make referrals. That is why they should be respected. What makes a customer satisfied may not be because you've done everything he or she demanded. It may not be because you've been able to accomplish all her wishes, whims, and caprices. No, it's just the way you answer. When people are making noise, when people are disturbing, they may just be looking for attention. And if you give them attention and give them listening ear, yes, you may find out that they have nothing serious, they just want attention. Yesterday, I don't know when you are listening to this, but just in my organization, yes, so yesterday, you know, somebody came in for something and I was there and the person came for the inquiry and she just started with skepticism, with almost insult and the workers were treating her nice and all those. She walked out and came back again, asking another question. And so I called her. As a mentor and a coach, I know she, she must have had very bad experiences. 
that colored how she sees everybody. So I started talking with her and, you know, in less than 60 seconds, we became very good friends, but she's my good friend up to now. Now, she now told me um, that she's an orphan. She, she never saw any of her parents. She never saw her mother. She never saw her father. And she has um, younger ones she's taken care of and blah, blah, blah. She stayed with aunt aunties and uncles. And, and so they've never treated her well. She, you know, didn't even finish um, junior secondary and all kinds of things. And you find out that, you know, if somebody passes through all this without counseling, the person should behave even more hostile than she's doing, that you, you will not appreciate her problem. So you don't know where people are coming from. You don't know what their problems are. So we may need not to judge them immediately. We may need to give them some listening ear. So satisfied customers will come back to buy more and make referrals. In fact, she wrote me a text message and said, do what I came for in your organization, because I think she was she came for employment. When I came for your organization, I didn't get it, but I got more than I bargained for. God will continue to bless you, sir. Yeah, I was excited because I felt, oh, um, I was able to hold my emotions and wasn't um, uh, replying in according with the circumstance. Yes, so more satisfied customers, more sales, and more profits, and you keep smiling to the bank as, you know, expanding your business and all this. So don't treat them according to how they have treated you. Treat them according to how they should be treated or they want to be treated as far as it is okay that it should be treated that way. Treat them how they will want to be treated. Yes, because the, your profit and the sustainability of your business is hinged on how they feel. Find out about your customers, find out about your competitors, because the same customers you have, they have the right to go to your competitors. And whatever thing they say against your competitor or for your competitor, they can say about you. So if you're in a hotel business or leisure and tourism and all those, and somebody say, oh, the hotel is um, creepy, the hotel is uh, smelly, but they have good food and, um, and they have good customer service. Don't just say, oh, because you said the, the wrong things, you are not going to listen. Listen anyways and check where and where and how you are creepy and, and smelly and then you correct it. So next time, if, she's ever, if she will ever come on, next time somebody is writing, the person will write beautiful things about your organization. So find out who your customers are and find out who your competitors are. Find out what your customers love about your competitors or what their competitors, or what their, your competitors' customers love about them and then try to replicate them in your organization if you do not have them. The main person who should be your worry in your business is not your competitor, rather it's your competitor, not from a negative perspective, but from the fact that anybody who leaves your organization will go to your competitor's organization. So what are they doing right? What will make people to leave yours and go to the earth? You should be able to find them and put them right, okay? To stay in business, customers must be constant. In other words, you must be very scientific about the number of customers you need to cover your fixed costs and cover all other costs. Yes, in your organization. If your customers are able to have, or rather if your business is able to have maybe 20 customers every month, will your business break even and then go to profit level? You must know. How many customers do you need to be able to break even and make money? And that's why if you don't have the training, financial management for entrepreneurs, I will encourage you to look for it or contact us so that you can pick it up. To stay in business, customers must be what? They must be constant. Customers must be, they must not come 
lower than a particular number. If what you need to make gain is 10, make sure you have at least gain every month, uh, at least 10 every month so that you can push for 20, for 30, but never ever go below 10 customers. That's what we mean by customers must be constant. Yeah, the customer and your customer, they love timeliness, they love value, and they love confidence. Your, your, your product must be timely, your services, and there must be value in it, and then the confidence. People shouldn't just buy from you, and then they just suffer and suffer and make a million dollar call just to make sure that they get their product. You must understand that. Now, there are some practical steps in conducting a market research. Um, you know, you must understand the kinds of customers that are buying from you at the moment and the kind that you need. You must understand the pricing um, of the products and the pricing system. You must understand location. You must understand quantity and quality and be able to know how often and how much they buy, how often do they buy from you and how much do they buy? It helps you. I'll give you a very simple example. If the local restaurant doesn't know how often and how much people buy, uh, that woman that's operating that small restaurant will cook so much for a thousand people and only 10 person will show up or for, a ten, for 10 people and a thousand people will show up. So you must understand quantity and quality and be able to, yes, use it. Now, you must understand the alternative products to what? To your product, which products are alternate? That there could be primary competitors, there could be secondary, there could be tertiary, there could be nursery competitors. Well, this is not about competition, so we're, we may not go into that. Now, alternative products may not be direct peer of your product. They may be in other categories, so you must understand that um, open your eyes very well to making sure that you look at all the possible alternatives, those at your level, those below you, those above you. Yes, their pricing and their quality, you must know that. You should be able also to define your market share. You must define your market share. How much of the market can you, how much of the market can you get? So you should be able to de de, um, get your market share, okay? You must be able to understand your market share. How much of the market can you get? How much of the market can you get? You must find market growth curve. How does the market grow? You need to find out how it grows because it will help you to know, yes, the beginning, you know, you see the maturity, you see the, um, yeah, yeah, you see the decline, you're able to see all those and know when to cash out or when to augment or when to take a new product to an old market or take an, an, an old product to a new market. Those are very important. So like we agreed, you, if you must do a good research, you need to understand people who will buy from you and then who will attend to them. You need to understand product. How do they want it? That it must be something you have already found out and then you are able to know how they want it. Price it. What price are they willing and able to buy? Then place from where will they buy? Where will it be so easy and better for them to buy from them? Promotion. Why should they buy from you? Why should they buy from you? You must know that. Then process. How efficient is the process of delivering your products to the consumer? How efficient is the process of delivering your products to the consumer? Okay? You must find out that. And then you should be able to understand the physical evidence. What are the proofs? What are the proofs that your business is real and in existence? These are things you must know if you must do a very nice work in your research, yeah? So tips on products, 
you must meet a consumer need or create one. You must meet a consumer need or create one. When Facebook created Facebook, or talk about created Facebook, we never knew we, what we needed Facebook. When TikTok created TikTok, we didn't think we needed TikTok. When WhatsApp created WhatsApp, we were comfortable with what we had. So you may look into the future and find out what you may create. Satisfy those needs. You need to satisfy those needs, okay? In other words, you must have the capacity to build on the products you have, put in more value that even if you have some deficiency in your product, you should be able to augment it and build it up so they can satisfy what they're looking for. Your packaging promotes yourself and you must understand that. You can redesign your product. You can repackage or segment your product for more sales. You know, you look at your product right now. You can change the name of the product, add one or two things or remove one or two things, change the pricing, and then you are good to go. Remember, like the Japanese will say, good thinking, good product. Good thinking, good product. Okay? So what influences you when booking a flight? The same question, what influences or what influences people who or what influence people, what and what influence people who want to buy your product? So put that booking a flight, put your product there so that you are able to ask that question and answer. What will influence people? Is it location? Is it the way we behave? Is it the quality of our product? Is it the pricing? Is it the process? Is it the physical evidence? What will influence people? to buy, is it how we promoted it? You should be able to answer those questions. Tips on place, be where your customers are. Very important, because we're talking customer service, you must be where your customers are. Because they don't need to go to the mountain and come down to the valley to buy, to be able to buy from you. Now, do business online. Online is the new place. If whatever you, whether you are selling bicycle or you are selling food or you are selling whatever, you can sell anything online. You are selling snail, you are selling fish, you are selling chicken, you are selling motor parts, you, whatever you are selling, you can sell it online. So do business online. Start with your WhatsApp, start with your email, start with your Telegram, uh, you know, post on Facebook, post on your WhatsApp status, uh, keep going and moving. You're going to find yourself doing so well. Now, Whatever happens, make buying from you easy. That's all. Make it easy to buy from you. Make the place easy to buy from you. Make it easy to buy from you. Think nearness to market and source of raw materials. Think nearness to market and source of raw materials. Determine your own distribution channels, whether they're direct or indirect. Be able to say, this is how we are going to market this. Some product, there are some of my products that nobody knows how I market them because I know we are the people who buy from buy those products are. So my high-end products, I don't come online and say, oh, come and buy ten thousand dollars, come and buy three thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars. I don't do that because I know where those people are. Yes, I can go and pitch them personally. I can go, my workers can go and do that. I can write to them, I'll write to them. I can reach out to them. Yes, yeah, so I don't waste my time going where they will never see. So determine your own distribution channel, whether direct or indirect. The price is connected to location. Don't go and sell what people around you cannot sell. It may not work. Price should cover total production costs and a marginal profit, whatever marginal means to you. It can be 10 times that amount, it can be two times that amount, that the, the cost price, whatever that means to you. Now, the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded, but not necessarily profit. So you should be able to know whether you want to do quantity or you want to do profit. And you should be able to know. Those who are selling, maybe let's say Gucci um, products or Fendi, and not everybody's buying, but they make sure that when people buy, they make the right profit, yes? But if you are selling something, um, retail items and um, 
um, fast moving consumer goods and all those kind of things, you may know that understanding what your, your profit margin is and understanding what your competitors are doing is very important. Otherwise, you push yourself out of the market. Turnover for profit is the right balance. So you, you look at you, your turnover and the profit you make. If you're going to sell a million and then you make 10 naira or uh, ten dollars, and then you sell 10 and you make ten dollars, uh, you know, within the same time, why must you kill yourself going to the market that is not um, friendly to you? So that's why we talk about Heli or Lehi, which one works for you. We in our organization do 20% Heli and 80% Lehi. Now, HELI stands for high energy, low income, high energy, low income. So that is HELI, high energy, you put in so much time, you put in so much energy, put in so much resources, low income. Then, so we do that 20% in organization. And then LEHI, low energy, high income. We do that just, just 80%, meaning that it takes more of our time. Why? Because that is where our main income come from. So we, we keep eliminating. There was a time it is Heli Lehi 50-50. It is time it is Heli Lehi 80-20. But as we keep growing the company and we are getting popular and our brand is strong in the market, we keep eliminating a lot of the Heli and then focusing on the Lehi. Okay? Okay. So Lehi is like, oh, the president or presidency invites you to do something, it should be a lehi, okay? Yeah, um, heli is like maybe a secondary school in, in, in your city invites you to do something. You know, most times it's not the quality of work. There's something you're doing for the presidency, there's something you do for the secondary school. But the point is um, the value they see in that will differ, okay? Now tips on promotion. Informing potential customers about your company and its products and services is something that you must do. Yeah, don't go ahead posting only comedy, posting only the things that are not adding to your business. Post the things that are adding to the sources of your business. So informing potential customers about your company and its products and services is one thing. If you don't know about this product, you would have bought it. Influencing them to purchase what you are selling or whether you're going to say you are doing Black Friday or you're going to say you're giving a discount or you're going to say whatever. Like, I, I know you bought this product at 90% discount, okay? So the point is influencing them to purchase what you are selling by explaining, getting them to see the value is very important. The next thing is your advertisement, your networking, your public relationship, your branding, everything must contribute to your promotion. There are lots and lots of channels of promotion, but let's talk about this uh, few really here. Now, cold calling, a lot of people, you know, don't like it. A lot of people hate it. And a lot of people say it is out of, uh, it's outdated. Now in organization, we still use it once in a while. For instance, when we want to enter into a company that we don't have access to, that you need, you must be an invite only company. So we can use the number there in the company and call them, ask for a particular, maybe HR manager or training manager or um, CEO or whoever and said, we have something important and we frame it in such a way that we get the invitation, okay? Because mm -hmm. we want to come do a customer with a right letter about that and all those. And uh, most times, maybe we inquire about the costly call letter we wrote and all this most times, they're going to treat that and then give you, um, what do you call it, um, a time to come for the training or rather for the visit. So when they give you a time to come for the visit, it helps you to have inroad into that organization. But without code calling, you may not be able to have that inroad, okay? Now, direct response marketing, digital marketing, can use social media, email, display ad, 
Don't just see these things and run away. Yes, they are all easy to do. Now, for social media, email, and all those, you can look for our Tybo. Tybo, T-Y-B-O stands for Take Your Business Online. Yeah, it's a full course that can help you. You can do the life, you can do um, the self paced that can help you um, do a lot of digital marketing. Now, flyers, banners, and signposts, okay? They are powerful. Don't joke with them. Flyers may not be in vogue. So if you ever use flyers, make sure you use them and you measure what came out of them. When I encourage digital flyer, you can go to canva.com, C-A-N-V-A, canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com, and you design your flyers there. You can do it yourself because it is already made and then you can edit and make it become what you want, change everything you want. Yes, these slides, we are made on Canva. Yes, so Canva is a very good one. You can do your presentation there or rather make your presentation. I can do your presentation there. You can design your flyers, you can design your PowerPoint, you can design your posts and all those there. Okay, good. Open air billboards. Don't neglect those. Don't always look away and say, oh, I can't afford it. Marketing, everybody you spend in marketing, it's an investment, it's not a waste because people saw you and people will be able to do what? To come back and uh, do so much with you. Demonstration and freemium. Demonstration and freemium. Always, always understand that when people know, their interest will go up. So be able to have the time. You can do a video demonstrating your product or service or platform. Yes, and people will go through and then their appetite is worth and then they will now do what? Buy. Premium is people can start with a free one and then upgrade to a paid one. It happens with trainings, it happens with softwares, it happens with every everything, okay? A lot of email marketing softwares I use, they give you 2,000 free, they give you 1,000 free. When you have used and it's just said the 1,000, then you feel like, okay, I love the result I'm getting and then you do more. Webinars and teaching. Teaching is the best way to sell it. And webinars is easy way to teach it. So you, there are so many. Zoom is a webinar platform, webinar jam. You have a meeting, um, Google meeting, Google Meet. You have um, WebEx, you have quite a lot. You have Teams. They can all serve as, as your webinar platform, okay? Webinar Ninja and all of those. Yeah, there are free ones. There are, you know, you can always set up your webinar and teach. Yes, when people are happy with what you thought, they may want to buy. Yes, key partners networking, very important. I use it a lot. Now, I'm gonna talk about key partners networking. When I talk about um, Dr. Carly Cousins' secret code, then I'll talk about key partners networking. Okay, so um, this is um, the bonus model. So the next model, is a bonus model. So we are going to talk about it right now. So I encourage you to go to the next model, which is the bonus model, Dr. Calico's Secret Marketing and Sales Code. Good.